Here is your question. Right. If you have read and understood considering the surgical pathology statement, can you tell me after reading the stem, what are the differential diagnosis that you would consider? Yeah, it could be osteomyelitis, uh, osteoarthritis, rheumatic arthritis, pseudo oh, gout. Right. How would you confirm your diagnosis? So I can uh, do uh, I start from uh, history taking and physical examination, yes. then doing the investigations from uh, complete blood count uh, to check the raised ESR, and uh, okay. we'll do CRP, and okay. I'll do uh, X-ray of the knee joint. <clears throat> yes, if and you take if the aspirate, a... uh, aspirate from the knee, and you'll do yes, the culture. Yes, there is swelling, swelling, yes. and there, there from are the swelling. swelling. Yes, so and... from the swelling, I'll. Aspirate fluid and we'll do uh, culture sensitivity. Can you please tell me what are the most common organisms that can be seen or can be found in this case? Yes, and if in case of uh, osteomyelitis, most common organism is Staphylococcus aureus. Yes. And there may also be coagulase negative Staphylococcus, Staphylococcus pyogens. Can you and, name few uh, common gram positive uh, organisms that can be found? Yes, gram positives are. Staphylococcus aureus, coagulase negative Staphylococcus, Staphylococcus pyogens, yes. Staphylococcus viridens. <clears throat> All right. Can you tell me the pathogenesis of this condition? How it occurs, the osteomyelitis? Yes, there are uh, four uh, four stages. Our first one is inflammation, then suppuration, then necrosis, and then uh, resolution or new bone formation. In case okay. of inflammation, there is uh, a huge swelling of the huge pain swelling of the joint and there is exudation of the fluid inflammatory uh, cells will be uh, will be there and it will cause increased interosseous pressure which will cause the pain and then okay. there will be formation of pus which is in case of separation stages uh, stage so this pus will go down through the workman's canal yes. and this pus and that causes elevation of the periosteum and then then I are you there? Can you define the term involucrum? Can you define please the term are you there? Okay, can you please tell me the term, uh, what is involucrum? Involucrum is the new periosteal new bone formation from the uh, dead bone. Yes. Which is at surrounded what, by the... At yeah. what stage does it uh, appear? Involucrum occur uh, within two weeks, around two weeks. Around two weeks, yes. Okay, can you please tell me, yes, can you please tell me uh, what is the, if you can define the term necrosis? Necrosis is the spectrum of cell uh, death where uh, there is morphological changes occur due to uh, progressive degradative action of the enzymes where, which act on lethally injured cell. All right. Can you please tell me why the pus it passes uh, through the bone and comes out? What mechanism yeah. is behind it? Uh, if infection persists, then there will be pus will may, may discharge and perforate through the skin. 
because there will be increased uh, pressure or intraosseous pressure right. which will cause sinus formation and the uh, and that the will in, that will lead to increased osmolarity and that that leads to tissue breakdown okay how would you manage the case in, in this particular case what would you do as we will give uh, we will take this after taking uh, the aspiration and culture sensitivity we will uh, give antibiotics according to the culture sensitivity or local uh, hospital protocol for around 6 weeks mostly uh, cephalos the patient has a knee plate. You have to take that out because that is causing. Yes. What is that causing? The knee plates will be act as a septic focus. Yes. And chronic irritation. So this you have to do. You the first thing that you would do first remove the foci, then you will give them medications, antibiotics according to the NHS protocol. Yes. All right. What else can be done? For this patient, yes, we will give uh, pain relief analgesics and and uh, we'll uh, splint the limb. Yes, and if uh, it doesn't uh, subside, then we can do aspiration of the joint. Yes, uh, and uh, rehabilitation, maybe physiotherapy or physiotherapy. Physiotherapy. Yes. yes. Okay. Can you please tell me uh, if you can define if you can tell me. What is the definition of cellulitis? Cellulitis is the inflammation of the uh, subcutaneous tissue. Extensive okay. inflammation. Yes. All this inflammation that takes place in the bone, uh, it takes place where? At what level? How many layers of bones there are? If you can tell me. There are periosteum, endosteum. Yes. Uh, and? Layers of bone, these two, periosteum and endosteum. So this inflammation takes place at what level or where in the bone? Uh, sorry, I will get that back. Okay. If you can tell me, uh, right, if you can come to one more. Uh, how would you differentiate between the abscess and the necrosis? Abscess is the localized collection of pus surrounded by uh, pyogenic membrane. And yes. gangrene is the uh, necrosis of uh, tissue with superadded petrifaction. All right. What type of gangrene there are that you know of? Uh, there are uh, moist gangrene and dry gangrene. Yes. Can you tell me more, please? Yes. Is there in any the difference in the involvement of... Uh, bacteria yes, or anything moist, else? Yes. Moist gangrene uh, due to obstruction of the venous circulation. Dry gangrene due to obstruction in the arterial circulation. Moist gangrene has uh, more uh, inflammation and, and dry gangrene has less inflammation. And there is uh, no line of demarcation in moist gangrene. In uh, dry gangrene, there is line of demarcation. It uh, Dry gangrene occurs in uh, limbs. Moist gangrene occurs in the bowels. All right. How would you define uh, necrosis from apoptosis, please? Yes, necrosis is the there is inflammation. Apoptosis there is no inflammation. Necrosis is uh, ATP uh, energy independent. Apoptosis is energy dependent. In case of necrosis, cell size is increased. In case of apoptosis, cell size decreased, and the cell materials are not uh, deranged in case of apoptosis. But in case of necrosis. Cell materials are deranged, cell membrane is, is uh, destroyed, destroyed, but in apoptosis, cell membrane is intact. Okay, uh, there are again, uh, apoptosis are divided into two, extrinsic and intrinsic, but there are other types as well. So if I ask you broadly, how would you classify cell death? Cell death are uh, maybe due to apoptosis or necrosis. Apoptosis again. Uh, if you if you can, uh, sorry, I'm interrupting you. If you can classify broadly, programmed cell death and non-programmed cell, 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 non cell death. cell death. Then tell me, please, if you take me from there. Programmed cell death and non-programmed cell death. Uh, programmed cell death are, yes, please. Programmed cell death are apoptosis, and there are caspase no, no, dependent. No, no, no. Here you're. Then again, there are two types. Programmed cell death 
can also be cat space dependent and yes, cat space, space non-dependent. Non -dependent. Then non -dependent. tell me, if you are telling me cat space dependent, then you can tell me, okay, that can be apoptosis, extrinsic, intrinsic, both, but more. Uh, apoptosis, ne necrosis, autops, or auto, uh, there netosis, are three more types. Netosis. No. Uh, All right, we'll come back to that later. Okay. All right, thanks. Thank you.